Historically speaking, lotuses are very easy to lust after, but a little bit difficult to fall in love with. Take the latest Evora GT, for example. It had an incredible driving experience when you were pushing hard out on a twisty road or the racetrack, but everywhere else, it started to fall apart just a little bit, perhaps literally. Luckily, the latest mid-engine sports car from the English automaker succeeds where its predecessors may have fallen short. The 2023 Emira polishes off just a few of those rough edges with a refined new driver interface and newfound mechanical reliability, but not to worry. It still maintains that phenomenal Lotus spec mind melt between road, car, and driver, and it's as strong here as it ever has been. Now that starts with the fact that I am driving the hardest core version of the Amira currently built. This is a 3.5 liter supercharged V6 model with an honest to goodness six speed manual transmission. And this car also has the sport specification, which means it has firmer springs and dampers relative to the smoother, more comfortable touring specification. The net result of that suspension is a firm connected ride. Maybe a little bit too firm if you're on a broken canyon road like the one I'm on today, but I will say that the Amira does a much better job of taking the edge off of some of those sharp, harsh bumps than the Evora did. And let me tell you, work hard the suspension does. You could spend your entire week's allowance on the swear jar of Lotus buzzwords in terms of connectedness and balance and incredible communication through the steering wheel and chassis. Everything about this car is just tailor-made to tell you exactly what you need to be doing in order to make it go fast on a road like this. It is just so damn good. It's incredible. And if you ever do find a straight enough stretch of road to unleash that 3.5 liter supercharged V6, you're gonna be met with 400 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Now, keen eyes will note that that is actually less power than the Evora GT last year, which made 420 horsepower, and that's for a very good reason. Do you remember that durability that I mentioned in the intro? Well, the Evora had a slight problem with valve float when you were running the engine hard near redline for long periods of time. So in order to preserve the engine just a little bit, Lotus actually detuned the 3.5 liter to only rev to 6,800 RPM instead of 7,000 RPM. But to be totally honest, you don't need the extra power in a car that weighs 3,100 pounds. This is plenty quick enough for most people with a Lotus claimed zero to 60 time of 4.2 seconds and a top speed of 180 miles an hour. Also helping out on this twisty canyon road is a perfectly tuned six speed manual transmission that feels almost like you're opening a safe or winding a Swiss watch with every little gear change. It's just perfect and the gates are spaced so close together that you always know exactly what you're getting with every flick of the wrist. Lotus is rightfully proud of that six speed manual transmission because the company gave the Amira a a little peekaboo window on the center console that allows you to look in and actually see the shift linkage at work. It's a great little feature that makes something very mechanical feel almost magical, and it gives you something to show off because you went the DIY route. Now I will say that some of the visceral drama of the Evora is gone in the Emira. It's not quite as snarling and insane as the old Lotus was because it is just a little bit more polished. You don't quite get that same high RPM shriek, although you do get a lot of lovely supercharger wine coming over your right ear, but it just doesn't sound quite as incredible and sonorous as the Evora did. But compared to everything else in the segment currently, it is almost impossible to beat the amount of involvement and drama that you get in an Amira. I will say that Porsche knows exactly how to tune an electric power steering unit, but it's still really hard to argue with the immediacy and feedback that you get in a proper hydraulic unit. And that's what Lotus has stuck to with the Amira, and they get tons of credit for that. The other thing that the Amira does incredibly well is instill the driver with tons of confidence, and that's because it has this preternatural sense of balance that's lacking in even the best sports cars. Now, basic physics tells us that in any automobile, when you're pushing hard through a corner and you lift off the throttle, weight transfers forward and the front end tucks in just a little bit as it starts to gain grip. The Lotus does this with millimeter-like precision. It's incredible the accuracy with which you can drive this vehicle. And I will say, at first, it is just a little bit off-putting. When you come from a larger sports car like a Corvette or a Porsche 911, and you use inputs designed for those vehicles, the Lotus feels so incredibly twitchy because all of a sudden you're darting all over the road. But once you learn to smooth out your inputs just a little bit, you can really have a whole lot of fun with this thing. And then there's tons of little intangibles. 
I'm not totally sure if this is true, but someone told me that Lotus designs its shifters to be one hang loose distance away from the steering wheel, and that's absolutely the case here. With the car in third gear and my thumb on the rim, I can absolutely touch the knob with my pinky. So it kind of just makes it feel very intuitive and very intimate. It's a brilliant driving experience to say the least. And last but not least, predictably, Lotus fits the Amira with some absolutely incredible brakes, which when combined with the track specifications Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, gives you all the braking confidence and grip that you need to do a really hard day of charging up and down the mountains. Absolutely brilliant, no notes, 10 out of 10. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that the Amira is perfect. First of all, it's not quite as exciting and thrilling as the dramatic and high-strung Evora GT, but at the same time, it's also not quite as refined as the Porsche Cayman GTS 4.0. But I will say this, the P car is my high watermark in terms of all-around driving enjoyment. At least it used to be, because I think that title now belongs to the Lotus Amira. This is a car that you just want to go and go and go as long as there's pavement in front of you, with all of the same thrilling driving experience as its predecessors, but with very few of their drawbacks. It's finally an all-around vehicle that just does the thing and does it well. And although this isn't really important given how brilliantly it drives, the new Amira is a jaw-dropper in the flesh. It's much more compact than a Corvette or a Cayman, giving it a more playful appearance, but there are plenty of callbacks to the Lotus Evaya hypercar to keep things exciting. The double bow front end, side air intakes, and flow through rear bumper give the Amira plenty of family resemblance, while also reducing lift and drag for better high-speed stability. Inside, the Lotus Amira benefits hugely from parent company Geely. The infotainment and driver displays are borrowed from the excellent Lincoln Company family of cars. Beyond the new tech, the cabin feels much nicer than the Evoras, although the door panels still feel a bit flimsy, but great materials, trim styling, and excellent ergonomics carry the day, and thank goodness the supercharger valve actuator is still plainly visible in the rearview mirror every time you twitch your toe on the throttle. Now, if I were designing my own personal Amira, I'd probably go for the Touring specification, as this extremely firm sport is just a little bit too harsh and unyielding for a daily drive. But in every other way, the Lotus Amira is finally an apology-free mid-engine sports car. Its knife-edge driving dynamics are no longer the mea culpa for lackluster comfort and materials that they once were, instead rewarding the Lotus faithful for their years of loyalty with a genuinely accessible daily driven sports car that's almost as happy running errands as it is clipping apexes. It's even a decent value. Fully loaded, the Amira First Edition V6 slots in at right about $106,000, roughly the same that you'd spend on a 718 Cayman GTS. Like I said earlier, the best sports cars in the world are the ones that inspire you to keep on driving, and that's exactly what the Lotus Amira does for me. Now, while I've got you, please be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel so that we can keep on bringing you awesome content like this. You can also click the link in the video description for our full first drive review of the Lotus Amira. You can also find us on all of your favorite social media, that's TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and interact with us there to let us know how we're doing.